Hello folks, this is Alex from the Timelapse Guy and in this video I'm going to show you how I edit GoPro Sunset timelapses with L Timelapse and Lightroom. For editing my timelapses I use a combination of Lightroom and LR Timelapse. I will post links to both programs down below in the description. I think there are pretty good demo versions of both programs available and uh, yeah just check them out, test them and if you like them buy them. I just really like them, they are really easy, they are good to handle and as you can see in this tutorial they are pretty amazing. So we're here with Lightroom on the left side and Ella Tandlabs on the right side. I just loaded the clip in here so all the uh, single pictures, the whole sequence is loaded in here. In this little window you can see the preview of the shot. Um, when every picture is loaded into LR Timelapse it gives you a little unedited preview you can see here. So I can, I can just go uh, faster through it as you can see here. And the first thing I do is uh, using the simple workflow and adding keyframes. As it's a sunset I'm using five keyframes and the next thing is saving the whole shot and after that you just simply drag this icon uh, to Lightroom, to the, import, uh, to the importer of Lightroom and then the import dialog opens and then you just click import on the lower right corner and Lightroom loads all the pictures. So now we're going to full screen on Lightroom and uh, click import and as you can see there are these shots with little stars on them. These shots are the keyframes I just created with LR Timelapse. So now on the lower right uh, I click on LR Time, LRT4 keyframes and as the sequence is loading here all the keyframes are supposed to appear on this new window. As you can see here I got these five keyframes here and I start editing with the first keyframe now. So here's the first keyframe I'm going to edit. The first thing I do as always I just crop it down to 16 to 9 because that's the YouTube standard format and I want uh, I don't want black bars in the on the sides so I need to uh, change the, the view, the, the crop factor. Yeah, and I start with this uh, temperature, this color temperature. Uh, as it was evening, I'm going to lower the temperature here and uh, the toning, I just go with a little bit more purple. As you can see here, if I move it to green, it's going to get green, but I want it a little bit more purple. So after that, I change the exposure. As you can see here, I just lower it a little bit and uh, set a higher contrast. I usually just move this scroll bus till I like what I see because Lightroom always gives you a real-time preview so if I want to get dark lower light I'm going to lower the scroll bar for the light. So then I change the depth and the whites then I lower the black tones then I add more clarity as you can see here if I go to the maximum the whole shot looks really grainy so you uh, should be careful with what you set on the scroll bar for clarity. Next bar is dynamics. Um, I just add more dynamics. As you can see, if you go for too much, it's going to be really unrealistic and it's not looking really good. So just be careful not to exaggerate what you added there. And after that, I change the saturation here. The next thing I add are the lights. Uh, so I I just uh, add a little uh, I just go with the lights from a little more change something with the dynamics over here okay then the midtones the darker midtones and the depth. So a cool feature with Lightroom is if you, you see all these saturation bars here, but I'm just going to click on this uh, on this field in the upper left corner and uh, then I just choose the color I want to edit and then I just move the mouse 
uh, up and down and as you can see it's changing the saturation of the exact color I want to change there. Uh, I'm going to do this again with uh, the sky so it's going to be more blue there and maybe just change this cloud tone. So now I'm going to add some graduated filters. Uh, Lightroom is placing them here automatically so I grab the uh, first one up here and just add a little bit more blue to the sky there so as you can see it's uh, more blue now and I just drag it down a little bit not too much so then I take the second graduated filter and add more clarity so uh, I improve the visibility of the clouds on the sky just take care if you add too much the uh, clouds are going to uh, look grainy then I take the next filter and with this graduated filter I'm going to add the sunset so add a little bit just a little bit more yellow so everything below this filter is getting a little bit more yellow and as, I, as there's so much grass there uh, it's going to be more green so I improve the toning. With this last filter I'm going to give uh, the grass a nice and green color so just uh, move the toning to a maximum maybe that's a little bit too much not too much so just go back a little bit and then I just drag it up to the horizon so as you can see now it looks greener over there as it was in reality. Add a little bit of contrast to the grass so this looks cool to me. A little bit more saturation. Okay, now I go to these round graduated filters. There are two automatically, so one of them I'm going to place directly on the sun and add a little bit more yellow so I get a nice uh, yellow shine on the clouds and on the grass and on the houses in the back, like this. A little bit more purple. Okay, maybe a little bit more clarity. And with the other filter I'm just going to uh, maximize the size of it and drag it on the clouds and add another bit of clarity here. As you can see the clouds are going to be way darker now, not too much, just a little bit. Okay. So now I'm going to grab the paintbrush, uh, just change the size of it and just go all over the grass here, like this. And uh, it just chooses everything I pointed it, like this, okay. And now I can just move the clarity of it and as you can see it's only changing there where I uh, I was with the brush. Now add a little bit more contrast. Let's just check uh, how it looked before we edited it. So as you can see here on the left side it looks barely that cool like we have it on the right side here. Another view of it. Um, and that's the benefits you have with Protein. You can do so much in color correction here. So now I copy everything I edited here and just paste it to the next keyframe and usually you don't have to change that much on the next keyframe so I'm I'm just going to skip it here and as you can see here I got every keyframe edited here uh, and they all look really nice now and the next thing I do is to save metadata command s as a shortcut for MacBook and then I go back to at time lapse, reload everything. So as you, now the keyframes are jumping down because I changed the lighting of it. And then I just uh, I just do the auto transition here. This takes a little while. Now I can add the flicker. Uh, this is just if there's some shots which are very overexposed or something, uh, and at time lapse will just correct this. Save everything. And now I can go back to Lightroom. So let's see the full sequence here. Select the full sequence and then I go back again on this read metadata from data. And as you can see here, 
uh, every single photo is edited automatically by Lightroom with the metadata from Ella Timelapse. And then I just simply click on export. This takes quite a while, so I'm going to skip it again if that's finished. Uh, Lightroom opens another dialog where you can just change the quality of the exported timelapse video and other stuff. I'm just going to skip it here. So here we go, beautifully edited sunset timelapse. So that's it for today's video, I hope you liked it. Comments and questions down below. If you want to see how I took this footage I edited today, just click on the screen right behind me, I will link you the video over there. Um, for more cool videos, just subscribe and I see you in the next one.